somebody. Morning. I'd like to welcome you to the Madawaka Historical Society's Quilt Show being conducted in the Burroughs Mansion, a historical building owned by the Borough of Madawan dating back to 1723. If you'll join us inside, I'll take you on a tour of the quilts that range anywhere from 1830 right up to the current day. We'd like to give you a little talk about the building as we go through and introduce you to a little bit of our current history and the history of quilts. Welcome. Good morning again. My name is Regina Hahn. I will be your tour guide for this section. We will meet the other members of the committee later on in the day as we go through the various rooms. The room you are in right now is the front parlor of the Burroughs Mansion, and this is where we will begin. Most of the quilts in here are part of the historic um, heritage project. We're going to start by looking at the rail fence. This quilt dates to about 1880. It is a typical qu quilt of its period. If um, they wanted to do something in, in keeping with that, they very t often tended to do a lot of cabins. The quilt above us is a goose pattern. It also dates to approximately 1880, although it isn't currently registered in the New Jersey archives. The quilt over here the p is a postcard quilt. It is called that because the postcards were used as patterns for making the templates, and, and that's why you see so many varieties of patterns and fabrics. The quilt above it is the Prairie Star, a very beautiful star pattern. This quilt dates to approximately 18, 1880 or 1890. These were um, well, both are all listed in the New Jersey Heritage Museum. In addition, the, the postcard quilt you have seen has been published in a book called Great American Quilts, and it is available on, in the museum if you would like to look at it. The quilts, the quilts are important in, in our history. Quilts also existed all the way through time. And while this particular quilt was made in 1860 in the red and green, in a uh, typical Irish chain, we can see some contemporary quilt forms being used in everyday quilting for Christmas tree skirts and pillows and ornaments. Uh, quilting continued to be popular right through the um, 1930s. This, this quilt in a modified drunkard's path pattern is typical of a 1930s fabric. And you can see the variety of colors and you can see the, the modified effect of the drunkard's path. When we go a little closer in time, if you want to look at this one, this is a honeycomb, a very standard shape that's used in quilting. Um, this quilt dates to approximately 1860. The quilt behind it on the rack is a 1981 quilt. It is a beautiful selection of colors in a pattern called Trip Around the World. Beside it is a current day quilt that was designed to be reversible. This quilt can be displayed on either side and the quilting and the patterns accommodate that effect. We're going to go back to our historic quilts. You should see it if you'd like to get an idea of the difference in the effect of the quilt on both sides. Old quilts, you think of the history from your grandparents that have been passed down and made by local craftsmen is our grandma. She's been loaned, loaned to us for the specific use in the show. So when you look at these historic quilts, remember all the things that your grandmother taught you. We're going to continue with some of our older quilts. This quilt is also in the New Jersey Historic Project. It is called Clover Blossom, and it was originally from the Ohio area, and it, uh, for, uh, excuse me, the Tennessee area, and it dates between 1830 and 1860. The quilt below it is a beautiful example of what is called a postage stamp quilt. We will see another example later, but you can appreciate this one because it is done in the nine patches, and then all the borders are beautifully done. It dates to approximately um, the turn of the century, but it was exhibited in 1927 in Morristown and won a third place ribbon, which is still attached to the quilt. As we continue over a little further, this particular quilt was quilted in 1982, but it was probably ma made 
before um, 1870. It is a lovely brown goose pattern. So we see that some of the old tops have been revived and are currently being used. Above it is a uh, quilt that was made in Brooklyn in 1840. It's a red and white patchwork, possibly um, a modified version of the bow tie, but in a circular pattern. If you can close in on this, perhaps you can see that this is a mariner's compass. This particular quilt was done in 1860. It's a lovely example of beautiful stitch work. Everything is double outline and it gives a lovely effect to the quilt. It is a little fragile, so I'm not going to pick it up. We're going to continue around the room and we're going to see other things that have been quilted. Cross stitch is also very popular and has been used in more current days and then um, quilted for a, a typical effect. Um, this is an Irish chain, very much like the red and green one you saw before, but this is the single Irish chain, and this one was done approximately 1860. Beside it is something that you might be very familiar with from Grandma's house. This is a crazy quilt. They were done between 1890 and, like, say, 1910, generally made of silks and velvets, and then very carefully embellished with beautiful embroidery work. The quilt in the far corner is a, is a kit quilt. We were going to see other examples of kit quilts. This is a beautiful um, floral garden pattern that's been applique. Um, as we leave the front parlor, we enter the back parlor, a very beautiful old room that has a lot of different furniture. We would like to welcome you back to view at another time. We're going to look at quilts that are popular um, through different periods of time than we've seen in the past. This is currently a current quilt, a contemporary quilt that was made, and perhaps when we think that the 500-year anniversary of Columbus sailing is next year. This is the back parlor of the main building. In here, we can call it our blue room today because most of our quilts turned out to be blue. Um, we have some lovely furniture and artifacts in this room if you'd like to come back at another date and view them with us. We're going to start at this corner of the room and we're going to look at the sailing ship's quilt. If we remember that the next year is the 500th anniversary of Christopher Columbus, Columbus's voyage, we can appreciate even more the significance of sailing ships in our history, but this quilt was only made a couple of years ago. The quilts over here, again, we have examples of pattern in a cross stitch. Below it, we have a beautiful star pattern, somewhat modified kind of Dresden plate effect. And over here is a much smaller quilt. This would have been a baby's quilt. Again, it's just a traditional star pattern. Above it, we do have a complete Dresden plate with all the beautiful colors. This was recently made in the 1980s. A very popular and well-recognized quilt would be the wedding ring. This is our 1930s, as you can see the different fabrics that we discussed earlier. And an applique quilt, heavily applique. This was a kit quilt and it's the tree of life pattern. Some standard quilt tops, the bow tie, the bow tie that we saw earlier, and a, and a 12 square or 16 patch. Over here we have an unusual quilt. It's a grandmother's flower garden hexagon pattern. But instead of quilting it, this has been tied, and it's been tied in a very nice way. We get a very heavy tying on the back and a lovely effect on the back of the quilt. Behind it is the postage stamp. This postage stamp contains over 14,000 pieces. The little templates would have been about the size of postage stamps, so you can imagine what it was like to sew something like this together. We have another mariner's compass with a beautiful ribbon border. This was made around 1970 by one of our local women. On this side of the room, we have a reverse Irish chain where the light has been put onto the back, dark background, made around 1900, signed Elma in Ohio. The quilt below it is a pinwheel star, also from the same era with some beautiful stitching. In 1980, this quilt was made. It's a leaf pattern, just different fall and um, 
autumn leaf shapes. A, a current quilt also made by one of our local people in the 1980s was this one called Diane Surprise Quilt. It's very u unusual because it has a zigzag border which gives a very interesting effect. This is the entrance hall of the Burroughs Mansion. Beside me on a quilt frame is a quilt that's called Daddy's Hex Kit. This is probably inspired by our, lo by our local neighbors in Pennsylvania with the hex sign centers throughout the quilt. We looked at a drunkard's path quilt earlier. This is a child's baby quilt, but this is also done in the drunkard path pattern, just combined in a different way to give us a different effect. As we move across the hall, we see two newly made quilts. The quilt above it is a kit quilt. These are available now, and you see them more and more coming forward. This is called a poppy. Below it is a beautiful example of grandmother's flower garden in lovely colors that would complement any home, so we're enjoying them all the time. Oh. Quilt on the top has been made from the small pattern, which you're unable to see. But if you look at it very carefully, you notice that each one of these squares are different, and the combinations give us different geometric effects. A very challenging quilt to try to design in piece. Below it, we have a quilt that was made around 1960, um, and it was quilted in 1988. This is a uh, quilt, I don't know what it is, called Homespun. I'm not quite familiar with the pattern. Okay. Why am I ready? Good morning. This is the J. Mabel Brown bedroom. This home was purchased from the Browns in 1974, and this bedroom set dates to approximately 1800s. It is a, a walnut bedroom set, and a lot of the furnishings that you see in here are from the Victorian period. We're going to look at traditional Victorian quilts, and we're going to look at some from other periods of time also. This red and white quilt that's down here was donated to the Matawan Historical Society. It was um, a fundraiser for the First Baptist Church, and it was made between 1867 and 1890 and has the signatures of all the women who contributed to it. Behind it is a Kentucky quilt with an unusual pattern called Cupid's Arrow. It was made around 1930. While not a complete quilt, the piece on the bed is a, is a typical Victorian look and is called embroidered ribbon. It's a basket pattern and has accent pillows, etc. that go with it. We have another star quilt over here. This is called a feathered star. It was made in Buffalo in 1870. Beside it is a contemporary quilt just made in 1990 with different varied patterns throughout the entire quilt. Quilts were not only just used for beds, they were often made for children, for toys, and for, for their dolls. So we have several examples of doll quilts, both new ones and antique ones displayed here. A nice Victorian Christmas tree skirt would accent a typical um, Christmas in a Victorian home. We have our little baby Michael in the crib with a typical contemporary quilt. Beside Michael, we have a very unusual quilt. This is called Trapunto. It has been stuffed in the different sections that you can see standing out, and beautiful Trapunto work all around the border on a satin background. Beside it are two Victorian quilts, crazy quilts. These quilts were done on a foundation background and are done in the silks and velvets. The one to the far side of the Trapunta quilt was done by a six-year-old girl around 1888. In front of those quilts, we have period quilts from the 1930s. We have a field of diamond quilt, which is a hexagon pattern. Above it, another hexagon pattern. This is called Grandmother's Flower Garden. This was made by someone in Matawan around 1930. And on the far side of this quilt, while we don't know who the maker is, we're very all familiar with the yo-yo. While not a traditional quilt, it is very popular in, in the quilting period of its time. The far side is a quilt from 
about 1860. This is a sawtooth pattern with a lovely sawtooth border um, in just plain red and white with interesting um, feather quilting. Since we are in the smaller bedroom, I thought perhaps it would be a little difficult for you to see, but I would like you to see that we have a straw stuff mattress on our typical properly woven uh, rope bed. And in addition to this, we've put some quilts that would have been typical for this type of furniture. We have a uh, log cabin over here. A beautiful example is the registered quilt also from 1860. It has very beautiful fabric in small logs and large squares with the warm hearth or door in the center of the squares. We have what is um, probably used as a sleigh blanket in Maine. This was made around 1880, 1890, and it's made of old garments, possibly coats and men's suit jackets. That's a postcard quilt, very similar to the pattern that we saw downstairs. Over here we just have a standard patchwork child's quilt. It's smaller than the average quilt, and this dates all the way back to 1840. There's some wonderful old fabrics in here, but due to the darkening of them, they're a little hard for you to see. Behind me again is another typical post uh, uh, excuse me, patchwork pattern with our fabrics. This dates to about 1870, 1890. We have no recognizable pattern in this quilt. Basket quilts were very popular. This is a fine example of a flower basket quilt um, in the red and white, which has faded to a pink and white at this point in time. Uh, oh, hold on, hold on, Reggie. Pattern or a goose chase pattern here on the top, on the end of our uh, rope bed. This one out for you to see because if you see the leaves falling from this contemporary quilt, if you look very carefully in the corner, you'll see Jack Frost very busily painting them for us. Thanks. We named this one, Do You Remember Polyester Double Knits? In 1970, polyester double knits were very popular, never to be seen again. A very difficult fabric to work with into a quilt top, but someone has made a tumbling, tumbler quilt out of it, and it's worth seeing. This room is the sewing room, and very appropriately, most of the quilt pieces that you see in here are not finished. So we're looking at some of the quilt patterns that you would have seen. Uh, we're also looking at some squares that will soon be combined into a quilt. We're looking at other forms of quilting that we haven't seen before. This is called mung work. It's very, very tiny and very, very detailed. Uh, just becoming popular in the United States. Or, or traditional um, schoolhouse patterns that you're familiar with. If you go a little further into the room, you'll notice that the old fabrics that they used to get for making pillow tops had the cotton attached to the back, and we're fortunate to have some of these pieces with us for you to examine. We also have the, the cathedral window coverlet, which while it wasn't a quilt, was also something that's part of the quilting history, and these pieces get pieced together, and we get a lovely cathedral window effect from them. As we continue around the room, we're going to look at some other... Oh, I'm saying cut, cut. This is a tiny little starburst pattern made by tiny little pieces of round fabric that have been folded to give us this effect. There's hundreds and hundreds of little pieces in this little teeny quilt top. The rest of the quilt tops that we have here, I'm going to try to show you bits and pieces as we go through the room. This is a typical basket pattern. We're going to call this fall basket or autumn basket because of the color. It's not a popular color and it wasn't used very often, but it is an interesting piece. Below it we have a patchwork, just continual squares. that gives us a very lovely effect and some beautiful old fabrics included. A contemporary quilt made in 1981 with a checkerboard pattern. Below it, from about 1860, 1895 to 1910, is uh, this quilt which comes to us from um, Virginia. It's a nine patch. You can see the patches as you go. We looked at uh, several postcard quilts before and this is an exceptional 
top because it's a wonderful study in fabric. The woman has very carefully outlined all of her pieces and centered all of her patterns and selected appropriate pictures throughout the quilt to give us a wonderful effect. And we'll make a gourd pond quilt. We've seen this pattern before. This was made between 1895 and 1910. The quilt above it is in the possession of the Historical Society and was donated to us. Um, it was probably made around 1900. This is a typical 16 patch quilt dating from approximately 1900, collection of the old fabrics. Of not, not particularly attractive by our standards today, though. This is the T quilt. This was made around 1895, again to 1910. And I don't know if you can see the T's, but you get a marvelous effect with the striping and the fabrics. Our drunkard's path has returned. This drunkard's path was made around 1920, and it's made with hand-dyed fabrics. Instead of what you would consider to be fading, you will notice that that's the way the dye took in the fabric that they used when they made the droplets path. Below it again, we have another nine patch. As we move into the fall, we have to start thinking about our holiday seasons, and these coats are very appropriate. As we remember, our turkey trot pattern in the back, and in front of us, we have the fall colors that have been worked into various original patterns and traditional pi pillows. This is a, a lovely horizontal stripe that was made around 1980 by one of our local people. Behind me are traditional and contemporary baby quilts. We have a, a Farmer Jim Sunbonnet Sue from about 1930s, and then from the 1980s we have both the teddy bear and the mother goose. We also have another one from about 1935, which is also the Sunbonnet Sioux. This one is done in the, in the old style and it's been highlighted with a lot of embroidery. Behind it is a lovely Irish chain made around 1920, maker unknown, that we happen to have here with a variety of colors that you don't normally see in the Irish chain, all done in postcard piece sizes. Uh, excuse me, postage stamp sizes. We have some more pillows, again from our fall collections, our baskets, and our flowers. A typical red and white quilt flower basket pattern from approximately 1870. Beside it, we have a very lovely example of the Dresden's plate with some beautiful border work. Beside the red and white quilt, we have a beautiful example of our Dresden plate quilt with, with some lovely border work and scalloping. Next to it is a contemporary quilt made in the 1980s. This is our grandmother's flower garden in a non-traditional approach as far as the colors go. Behind it is an original design um, called Pansies. This was made in the late 1980s and is a lovely beautiful original pattern. Again, we introduce our yo-yo quilts. Very popular, very colorful, and very cheerful. 1930s era. Remember Cupid dolls? Perhaps you would enjoy seeing a quilt like this, which is reminiscent of all the little Cupies that we enjoyed in the 1930s, 1940s era. Our sunbonnet Sue returns to us in a slightly modified pattern without her farmer Jim also 1940s. Behind me is our country doll. This was made in the night 1985. Very cozy, tucked into his little quilt of his own, all done in hearts. Below him, we have a quilt made in 1988, which is a split rail pattern in a lovely combination of colors. Very difficult to see, but very worth seeing is our crib quilt made in 1947, all embroidered in the little animals that our children would have loved. As we continue down the steps, we have another one of our children's favorites, our teddy bears. Nothing would be complete without our teddy bears. This quilt was made recently, and we just love our little bear with his sunglasses. 
We also have small quilts throughout the house that you might enjoy seeing, such as this one that has using the fabric to give the effect. It has been hand colored. Behind me is another child's quilt. This is done in small patchwork squares in a triple historical society. Each block was made by a different woman and it's called Monmouth County. You will recognize the various differences of the quilt. And this is on permanent display in the mansion. While we have enjoyed quilt you ready? Us comfort over the years and to highlight our homes and decorate our homes. There are many children today that are suffering with AIDS and a lot of the quilters in the country are working on a project called the ABC quilts, the AIDS baby quilts. Thousands of these quilts have been made by women and donated to various hospitals and centers in an effort to make these children's lives a little bit more personal, a little bit more comfortable. We have the literature available for, for anyone who would like to make a quilt to benefit this wonderful program and to help these unfortunate children. So when you see ABC quilts, you'll know what they represent. It's too far over here. Wait a minute. Before we would leave today, I would like to introduce you to the various members of the committee, if I could get them to stop working for a minute and come and join us. Our chairman, Arlene Magasin. Uh, Kim Magasin and our co-chairman Emily have worked very hard to present this quilt and to help you with a little of the history of quilting. I've been here forever. I hope you will come and learn a little bit about quilting and then join us again in the future to learn a lot more about the history of Matawan and this wonderful community that we've had the opportunity to live in. Thank you.